Welcome to Poker Market, making poker more efficient. Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of my High 6 Hand History series. I've decided to call this video series Secrets of the Nosebleed Player, part 2. If you are interested in some of my other courses and videos or books, you can check out my site at galvinbay.net. So let's look at a quick overview of what we are actually covering in today's video. So here are some of the common themes I've seen in the hands. River over bets. So when is a river over bet good? A good bluff raising ranges for a river. So there'll be some examples of raising over bets, and I want to talk about what hands are good for raising in those spots. Selecting bluff catches for calling down. Sometimes some of the players have pretty weak hands, but they have to defend some of their weaker hands. So I'll just discuss what hands are more suitable. Selecting bluffs for barreling the river. Also another important topic. Min 5 bets. Skillful manipulation of ranges. So there was there's one particular hand whereby the opponent seemed to be intentionally making awkward sex sizes on the river. So I think he's up to something. People don't really do random stuff at the nosebleeds, so everything is done for a reason. And I hope that we can try to explore some of these different thought processes. We do not necessarily, we will not necessarily be able to have a tactic to copy. It's more about understanding thought process, how to have a proper framework to approach each spot differently. So I, I hope that by the end of the video, you are able to better understand a lot of the concepts covered in this video. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we have a hand here. True Teller opens, Kanu 3 bets and True Teller calls. Kanu bets 1 quarter pot, which is very common based on what we have seen in the past video. So we also saw, I think it was True Teller, who overbetted the flop and jammed the turn with Ace. Um, no, he didn't do it with Ace Queen. His hand wasn't shown, it wasn't revealed. But I was talking about it in the previous video, whereby it would make some sense to do to take the overbet 1.5x pot flop and turn, line with some Ace Queen, King Queen, Seven Eight. Maybe some Queen X with a draw or King X with a draw. Yeah. So true Tyler raises with a straight which I think which I think is very standard. Kanu calls which is also very standard. On a two tone turn I think he has to call Ace Queen for sure. So this hand isn't that interesting, but the main takeaway is that I think once again it's a texture whereby your opponent can't really defend hands weaker than pocket sixes. He cannot really anyhow float ace five suited. So it's a good spot just to bet really small. And you know if you bet one quarter pot, your opponent has to fold like um. 20% of the time for your bet to be profitable. 20% or more. But I think when you bet one quarter pot here, you're probably getting like 25 to 30% full equity here. Which speaks for a really nice auto profit spot, I think. So, I like the size. Maybe I might bet one third instead, but still the idea is there. Whereby, it's just really hard for your opponent to continue with too many hands. Okay, next hand. So it gets checked around in a three-way pot. This is a spot where I've seen True Tyler bet one third pot here for protection with a hand like pocket sixes or pocket eights. But I think they are all using mixed strategies here, so I I don't see this being a problem checking here. Kanu bets here. I guess True Tyler can raise a turn sometimes, but he also wants to slow play sometimes. Mm, 